clown costume. There was a teacher who hated his students. He hated the way they dressed, their odd hairstyles, and their bad language. The way they slouched in their seats, and the way they stared vacantly at him while he explained some math problems really got on his nerves. They disgusted him so much that he couldn't bear to be around them. At school, he had a reputation for being strict, mean, and unfair. If any of his students did even the slightest thing wrong, he would hand out harsh punishments, sending them to detention, or giving them extra work to do. The teenage girls and boys in his class grew to despise him, and he delighted in making their lives a misery. One night, as he was relaxing at home, listening to classical music on his record player, the teacher happened to look out the window, and something caught his eye. In the window of the building across the road, a figure was dancing around. It was a clown, and it seemed to be staring right at him. Unnerved, he quickly closed his curtains and tried to forget about it. The next day, at school, his students were irritating him more than ever. When his back was turned, they would make funny noises to embarrass him. One time, when he sat down at his desk, somebody made a noise. It drove him crazy. He couldn't figure out which one of the teenagers was doing it. That night, he was home, reading a book when he glanced out the window. He saw the clown again. It was dancing around the same window, waving its hands up like a crazy person. When it caught his attention, he reached down and picked up something. It was an axe. As the teacher watched in astonishment, the clown began waving the axe around like a mental patient. He was leering at him with a grotesque grin on his face. The teacher jumped out of his chair and quickly drew the curtains. He thought about calling the police, but what would he tell them? The clown hadn't done anything illegal, not yet anyway. The police probably wouldn't even believe him. They would just think he was crazy. He decided to put it out of his mind. The next day, in school, the students were all staring at him silently. He wondered what they were up to. When he sat down at his desk, he found out. They had placed a pin on his chair. He jumped up, screaming in pain and clutching his buttocks. The teenagers burst into laughter. That's it, teacher shouted. Detention for everyone. You won't be laughing this evening when you're all going home two hours late. That night, the teacher was at home, watching a documentary on the TV. He happened to look out his window, and he saw some teenagers gathered across the road. He recognized them as students in his class, and they were spray-painting graffiti on the wall opposite to him. He had no doubt that the graffiti was about him, and made him seethe with rage. He reached for the phone to call the police. Just then, he spotted a figure hiding around the corner. It was the clown. He was holding an axe in his hand and chuckling to himself. He was just a few feet away from the unsuspecting teens. All of a sudden, the teacher was overcome with horror. He had no idea what the clown was intending to do, but he suspected it was something terrible. He had to warn the students. He rushed out of the apartment bounded down the stairs and ran out onto the street. Watch out, watch out, he cried desperately, but he was too late. He could only watch helplessly as the clown attacked his students. The teacher covered his eyes. All of a sudden, he heard the sounds of sirens and several police cars screeched to a halt in front of him. In the darkness, their headlights illuminated him. He looked down at himself and realized he was wearing a clown costume. On his feet, there were a big pair of clown shoes. Put it down, put it down, he heard the policeman shouting. Then, he noticed a bloody axe he was holding in his hands. Clown Statue A few years ago, there was a wealthy couple who had two young children, a boy and a girl. The family lived in a large house in Newport Beach, California. After taking care of their kids all week, the mother and father decided that they needed a break, so they booked a table for dinner at a nice restaurant. That evening, 
They called a teenage girl they knew and arranged for her to come over and babysit their children while they were out. When the babysitter arrived, the parents told her to fix supper for the kids and put them to bed. After that, you can just watch TV and help yourself to anything in the fridge, said the father. And if you wouldn't mind, said the mother, could you watch TV in our bedroom? The kids have been having nightmares recently, so if you hear them crying, you can just go in and calm them down. The babysitter happily agreed and the parents left for their dinner date. The girl gave the children some milk and cookies, then ushered them upstairs to bed. She started to read them a bedtime story, and before long, the little boy and girl were fast asleep. After tucking them in, she switched off the lights and went to watch TV. When the babysitter walked into the parents' bedroom and sat down, she noticed that there was a creepy looking clown statue standing in the corner of the room. She tried to ignore it, but it looked so eerie and disturbing that it sent a chill down her spine. She felt as though its eyes were staring straight at her while she watched the TV. As time passed, the babysitter started to feel more and more uneasy about the clown statue. Whenever she glanced at it, she got an unsettling feeling that it had moved ever so slightly. Finally, the clown statue began to freak her out so much that she couldn't handle it any longer. She decided to go downstairs and phone the parents. When she dialed the number they had left for her, the mother answered. Hi, it's me, said the babysitter. Everything's fine. The kids are fast asleep in bed. But I was just wondering, would it be okay if I watched TV downstairs? Of course, replied the father. But why? I know it sounds silly, laughed the girl. But the clown statue is really creeping me out. The clown statue? Asked the father. Yeah, the clown statue in your bedroom, the girl replied. The phone went silent for a moment. Listen to me very carefully, said the father. Take the children and get out of the house. We will call the police. Go, now. What's wrong, asked the girl. The father gulped and replied, We don't have a clown statue. For a second, the babysitter just stood there, stunned. Then, she dropped the phone and raced upstairs and grabbed the children, carrying one under each arm. She raced downstairs again and fled into the street. Huddled on the sidewalk, comforting the two children, the babysitter looked up at the window and saw something that made her scream out in horror. Peeking through a gap in the curtains was a white, painted face of a clown. It stared at her for a moment, then sank back into the darkness. Within minutes, the police arrived and cautiously entered the house. In the upstairs bedroom, they found a man dressed in a clown suit. When they arrested him, they found a knife concealed in his costume. The clown turned out to be a mentally disturbed midget who was a convicted murderer and a cold-blooded killer. The evil man had been stalking the family for months, lurking in their attic during the daytime and coming out to sneak around the house at night. For weeks, the children had been complaining about a clown statue that stood in their room and watched them sleep. But the parents just dismissed this as their nightmares. Timmy and the Clown the story begins with a young boy named Timmy, who loved nothing more than going to the circus. He was especially fond of the clowns, with their bright red noses and baggy pants. Timmy had always found them funny and entertaining, and he never understood why some people found them scary. One day, Timmy's parents took him to the circus as a special treat. The ringmaster announced that there would be a new clown in town and the crowd erupted in applause. Timmy clapped and cheered along with the rest of the audience, eager to see the new clown in action. As the lights dimmed and the music began, the new clown stepped out onto the stage. At first, Timmy was thrilled. The clown's bright red hair and oversized shoes were just as Timmy had imagined them. But as the show went on, Something seemed off about the new clown. His smile never reached his eyes, and his movements were jerky and unpredictable. Timmy didn't seem to notice anything strange about the clown, but Timmy's parents couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. When the show was over, Timmy begged his parents to let him go meet the clown. 
They hesitated, but eventually gave in to Timmy's pleading. As they approached the clown, Timmy's expression changed drastically. All of a sudden, he was not as excited to meet the clown. The clown's makeup was smudged and streaked with sweat. His eyes seemed to be staring right through Timmy. Noticing this, the clown quickly offered Timmy a balloon. It almost looked like the clown wanted to be friendly and make Timmy feel better with the balloon. Timmy hesitated for a moment, but feeling safe with his parents right next to him, Timmy reached his hand to grab the balloon. But suddenly, the clown's hand closed around Timmy's wrist like a vise. Timmy's parents tried to pull him away, but the clown's grip was too strong. Timmy watched in horror as the clown's face contorted into a twisted grin, revealing a twisted smile. The clown's eyes seemed to glow with an otherworldly light as his grip on Timmy's hand grew stronger, his parents now bashing the clown with whatever they had in their hand repeatedly over and over. This was the last thing Timmy remembered. The next thing Timmy knew, he was waking up in a hospital bed. His parents were hovering over him, tears streaming down their faces as they embraced him. Without another word, Timmy jumped and hugged both his parents as tightly as he could, happy to see them once more. A few hours later, Timmy was discharged from the hospital with a small bruise on his right wrist, but no injuries. Timmy never questioned what happened that day. He was simply happy to be reunited with his parents, as were they to have their son back. With the horrible day behind them, they moved on, leaving the past behind and staying a happy family. It wasn't until years later that Timmy finally learned the truth about that fateful day at the circus. The new clown had been a notorious serial killer, known for luring young children away from their parents with promises of balloons and candy. Timmy had been lucky to survive the encounter, and the clown had been captured and taken to prison.